Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. It is Thursday, so we are talking Turner Syndrome. This week I wanted to kind of answer a comment and um, a couple of messages I had gotten about a specific topic that I told you guys about last week. Before we get into that, I wanted to respond to some of the comments from last week's video. Last week was a rather hot topic video talking about if Turner Syndrome is actually binary or not. So it was debating is Turner Syndrome actually an only female condition or can it occur in males? What does it look like? What does research say? Um, and I kind of gave my take and my opinion on it and I heard from a few of you your thoughts on the topic. Faith Hope Love said, I know that God created us all male and female. All documented cases of TS have been female without question. I feel this new idea is surfacing due to the whole question of gender lately. That's my take on it. I do agree. I only recently saw this conversation coming up. Um, I, I agree that there is definitely more conversation around gender than probably ever has been. And would have ever been a part of the conversation of Turner Syndrome when they were first doing initial research. Absolutely. Um, it's just way more of a topic now than it ever has been. So in that sense, yes, that is true. I, I do wonder what the cases where a, a boy has a damaged X chromosome look like. I wonder what that shows. I wonder if it looks the same as Mosaic. I don't know. Again, my take is more, well, it's the second, like defined as the second X is affected in one of those two ways. So that kind of answers that for me. A boy only has one X, <laughs> but that is interesting. So it's, yeah, it's an interesting topic. Kate Adams said, Kleinfelters and Turners do get mentioned together at times as they both involve differences in the sex chromosomes from the typical XXXY pattern. To my knowledge, there isn't damage to the Y in Kleinfelter syndrome though. There is actually an extra X typically present, so XXY. I checked out Wikipedia. It can involve things like above average height, some female characteristics like breast development, and a higher chance of sterility. So I have to admit, I have not done a ton of research on it, like I said in the video. And um, so thank you for sharing that. Thank you for sharing uh, more insight into it than I was able to. And that could very possibly be what really helps have that conversation is, like I said, the, the, the chemistry of it, I guess, the, the genetics of it. What genetically does it look like and do they match? And if they don't match, and the reason they don't match is because your chromosomal makeup is different distinctively because female and male, that kind of answers that question for you. <laughs> but once again, I would love to see more research and more studies done on it. I would love to know more. So jumping into today's topic, I wanted to talk about finding a good doctor. I have had a couple questions about this and I, 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 I've talked about it before and I, I really think it's important. I think it's something that kind of doesn't get talked about as much within the community as I feel like would be helpful because it is more of a required effort to find a doctor that's knowledgeable on Turner's than you would actually think or expect. There is not a widespread knowledge even in the medical community. Um, there are many doctors who have been in practice for quite a while and have never seen a case of it. And in that situation, if you go to them and they don't know about it, you're kind of stuck with the decision of, do you stay with them or not? And can they actually help you if they don't understand it? In my opinion, if they don't understand it, they can't help you. It is already such a nuanced thing that having no understanding of it to begin with gives you no foundation to go from when the outside the norm things happen when it doesn't look like a textbook case of it 
And so in that situation, or just in general, when you're meeting a doctor for the first time, see how much they know about it. Don't be shy in asking how much they know about it. It is a medical condition that you have that you need their help with if they are the doctor that's going to be caring for you. So in that circumstance, if they are not knowledgeable about it and you find out that they don't actually know that much, are they willing to learn? Would be a major factor for if they're a good doctor for you and if they could fit. Even if they don't start out knowing a ton, if they're willing to learn about it, if they're willing to go back and research on it, to brush up on it, to find out more and to really be involved with you in the process of learning it and figuring it out and learning your case really well, I don't see a problem going with them. And of course, with any doctor you come across, whether that's how it starts or not, if it, if it becomes a situation where they just aren't able to help you, you have to make the decision of whether or not to move to a different doctor. And that can be scary, but if they really can't help you with it, they can't care for you fully as you need them to. So you're better off finding a different doctor that can help you, that can take the time to learn more, that that is willing to go through that process if they don't already know, or maybe you could end up finding one that knows Turner's really well. And you won't have that struggle, you won't have that fight, which would be a great thing. So the, the first filter of what would be a good doctor and what wouldn't is, do they know about Turner syndrome? And then if they don't, are they willing to learn? And are they going to be able to listen to you when you say, I feel this way? When it comes to Turner syndrome, you know yourself best. You know how you feel, you know how your body acts, you know what's happening. And each case is so different that just knowing the textbook case is not going to be enough. And any doctor that assumes that will be enough is already starting off on a bad foot. And just in general, a doctor that is going to listen to you and take into consideration what you're saying is a good sign. Turner syndrome or no Turner syndrome. I know when my mom and dad found out that I had Turner's, she was still pregnant with me, and they had a pediatrician already for my brothers, and so she called them, and she told them, and she said she was pregnant. He said, oh, congratulations. And then she said, she has Turner's. And he said, okay, okay. She said, do you know what that is? Do you remember what that is? And he said, I, I, I vaguely know what it is. I, I remember learning about it. Let me brush up on it. Let me go back and research some and remind myself of things and find out what's out there now. Let me do my research and re-brush up on it because um, it has been a while. So he did that and he called her like within the week, like a couple days later or something and said, okay, this is what we're going to need to watch for. This is what I want you to keep me updated with. And then when I was born, he was at the hospital with a cardiologist and uh, two or three specialists with him to look me over. He was the one that looked me over and he was like on it. And he was amazing. We could not have had a better pediatrician to go into that circumstance with. And he was not one that started out super knowledgeable with it. Um, he did remember learning about it, but he knew it had been a while and he acknowledged that he needed to go brush up on it and re-figure it out, relearn about it and remind himself. So that would be a, a very good example of you, of what that looks like, of being willing to learn and remind yourself and yeah, that's just a great example of that. Another one was my gynecologist. When I saw a gynecologist for the first time, I was already on HRT. I was already on one that I had not been feeling great with. And I told her, I told her I had Turner syndrome and I told her I was on HRT. And she said, well, I, I don't have other patients with Turner's, but I've heard of it. Uh, but she said, I do have a lot of patients that that's their reason for being on it is <laughs> not to prevent pregnancy, but to help with hormone stuff. Um, she said, I, I suggest it to patients at times and they balk at it and think, oh, I don't need birth control. 
she says they don't realize that there's more to it than that. And she was very helpful and really understood my situation with trying to figure it out on the hormonal level rather than just preventing pregnancy. So those are the main things I would look for. And if you have any other specific questions, um, leave them in the comments below and I can try to address those as well. That is my take on it. That is what I've experienced with finding a good doctor. I will also link the other video I did on being your own advocate and that kind of delves into this stuff too because um, I think that's a major part of having a good doctor is also being able to be your own advocate with them and you being in the practice of being your own advocate. So I hope this was helpful. I hope you learned something and got some good tips for finding a good doctor. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and share it with everybody. Leave any topic ideas for next week's topic in the comments below and I will talk. Subscribe if you are not already subscribed to my channel and I will talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye!